Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video, I have the ROG Strix 3090. Well, I have to say there's some stock levels out there, not much. I was able to spam click my way into uh, ordering one of these online. I was actually able to get this from uh, Newegg, so there is hope to grab one of these cards out there. So today's video, I'm gonna really talk a little bit about uh, the card itself, go over some of the thermals, see how well this thing can overclock, and let's get to it. Let's roll. All right. So the fact that I was able to pull one of these cards online means that there must be some stock out there. So let's take a peek at this unit. All right. There it is there. Oh, it's chunky. So fastest card for now. We'll see. This is legit. It's sealed all the way around. Okay. I just feel like these are such a hot commodity that you're, you're just not actually going to get anything that's inside of it. As you saw in my last video, the EVGA FTW3 uh, wasn't able to get great thermal performance. And so I'm really hoping that this card is actually able to perform well. And if it's not, I'm going to blame my case. And if it's not my case, then I'm going to water cool it. But the first step is, let's see what it's capable out of the box, see how, uh, how well it performs, and uh, we can go from there. You know, the one thing that I'm looking forward to on this is to see how well this cooler is able to perform uh, relative to uh, the size of this, uh, this massive heat sink. But let's get to the unboxing, let's see what's inside. Okay. So this card does come with three year warranty, which is quite good. Hopefully I never have to use that. So let's open this unit up. There it is there. All right. Oh, this thing's a monster. Oh my goodness. It looks great. Inside we got some, some manuals, likely how to install that card. Some stickers. And a good old manual. We need those. <laughs> so we got a keychain. This is actually a, a part of PCB, so that's pretty interesting. That's cool. And then we have some uh, tie wraps, presumably for the cabling, for the power. And of course the card itself. So kind of a no-nonsense little bit here. But let's take a look. At this card. Okay. So as you've seen on many of the reviews, it has the three fans. Uh, they are the middle one is a counter rotation. And then looking through it, you can see that it does have quite the large outcropping here, where the uh, the heat sink falls over the card by probably another good two two and a half inches. All right. So noticeably on the back, of course, we have a full array of MLCC capacitors. So hopefully we don't have any issues. Uh, on the uh, the backside here, of course, we have performance mode and what's called quiet mode. So we'll do some testing around that. And of course, then we have three eight pin PCIe power. So that gives us 450 watts right there, plus our PCIe that off the motherboard. I can tell you this card is heavyweight. And on the backside, we have two HDMI ports and three DisplayPort out. And then one of the things that you can see just up in here is there are two fan headers off the back of the card. So you can plug in here. Um, so in case you say had some fans that wanted to uh, push over the card or maybe from a side panel, it'd be controlled by the fan curve of the card itself. This is now our LED strip. So we'll see how that uh, looks inside the case. That's really it. 
let's get this thing into a system and uh, power it up, see how it performs in some games and uh, see if we can do some overclocking on this if it has some thermal headroom. All right, so let's get to the benchmarks. First up, we have superposition. Now, my test system was a Ryzen 3900 XT memory at 3600 with timings of C16. I did a stock performance BIOS run, and then I did an overclock run with a performance BIOS, 123% of the power limit, GPU at plus 100, and memory at 250. So first up, you can see that the stock settings on the 3090 Strix actually outpaced both the Alienware along with the EVGA 3090. Now, this does have higher clocks from factory, so that would explain the delta. And then I also did an overclock run and that was able to push up to 18,089. Similar story on the 1080p Extreme Profile at 12,770 beating up the other cards and then 13,648 on the overclock. Heading over to 3D Mark. So I went through all the scores, give you a complete picture of how this car performs. And as you can see, it does not disappoint. Now I did also run it on my Ryzen 5950X. This one's still getting built, but you can see that some of those uh, scores are CPU oriented, like you can see in Firestrike, which it definitely gives a hand towards the Ryzen 5950X. Now, when you look across all the rest, Time Spy, Time Spy specifically, 18,130, on the overclock, 18,908. And then taking a look at Port Royal. So on stock settings, 13,103, and with the overclock, 13,839. The one thing to note though, is that the Alienware Aurora R11, with the 3090 does fall behind just slightly by about two or three percent across the board. So heading over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, of course, highest setting, the resolution on this is 3840 by 1600. Now you can see on the stock settings, this comes in at 116 frames per second. On the overclock, didn't see that much gains, actually only two more frames per second, hitting 118. So one thing to note that this is a more CPU bound uh, game and so the frame rates of course are uh, reflected as such. All right now heading over to Far Cry 5. So stock settings 91 frames per second and then over on the overclock 94 frames per second. Now you can see that the Alienware certainly does a great job here 119 frames per second and that's mostly due because of the 10 900 kf. Heading over to Flight Simulator so all ultra settings, same resolution. Saw around 44, 45 frames per second on stock and no gains when the GPU is overclocked. Of course, this is a CPU bound game and unfortunately was not able to uh, crest up into the 50 frames per second at all here. Heading over to Red Dead Redemption, max quality ROG 3090 Strix hit 112 frames per second. And this game, not a big change when you overclock the GPU. Heading over to Horizon Zero Dawn, max settings, same resolution. We saw this come in at 85 frames per second and the overclock 91. So for this particular game, we saw a nice jump of six frames per second. Heading over to the Division 2 highest settings on the 3090 Strix stock, 92 frames per second, and lifting up to 98 frames per second when overclock. Heading over to Watchdog Legion max settings. This came in at 60 frames per second, and we saw an almost a 10% jump when the GPU was overclocked up to 65 frames per second. So Call of Duty Warzone max settings, this came in at 129 frames per second on the stock settings and we saw that lift just a couple frames per second when we overclocked the GPU. So not big gains here either. Now onto Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This one came in at 73 frames per second on the stock 3090 Strix. 
The overclock Strix, only 74 frames per second. The story continues. Heading over to the Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This posted both 65 for the overclock and the stock settings. All right, so that wraps up the benchmarks. This card is impressive. Now, what I was actually shocked to see is that the overclock on this didn't net that much more results, at least when paired with the 3900 XT. So you want to subscribe because I do have a 5950 that I'm going to put this unit in and we'll see if it is any different. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to water cool this card. I've got a couple parts, the EK quantum vector backplate, but more importantly, the quantum vector specifically for the strict. So this is the water block. So we'll see if once this is on water, if it performs that much more, especially if I can get a little bit more out of it with an overclock. Now, overall, I've been pretty happy with the card. So the one thing that I will have to say though, is when it is on load, like really high GPU load, I find that in Port Royal, I do get a little bit of buzzing, um, coil whine effectively on the, uh, the unit. I couldn't determine if it was actually the fan or if I actually have something on the board itself. So I will rule that out by taking this whole unit off when I do the water block and we'll see whether or not that actually has an impact. I did see online that there is a couple people that are complaining that they are getting quite a heavy buzz uh, coming from the back plate. So we'll have to wait and see to see if I have that issue with this one as well. Now, overall, the RGB on here is, uh, is fairly nice. The one thing that I'll let you know about though is that this acrylic that's on here does get scratched pretty easily. Just by you know wiping your hand on it, it is a very, very soft plastic. So you already get a little bit of the finer scratches on it. So just be careful. It doesn't come protected from the factory, which is unfortunate. So just be mindful of that. So this card is beefy. I mean, this hardly fits into my case. And so I am looking forward to uh, being able to put that on a water block just simply because it'll be a little bit smaller. I can actually fit the fan underneath of it. I had to remove my fan to get this unit in. But uh, if you're looking for one of the highest performing cards out there, uh, this is the one for you. So I believe right now, the only card that you can get that's actually clocked higher than this are the Kingpin cards. But this one is no slouch, coming with a stock setting of 1860. So overall, would I recommend it? Well, if you want the fastest available right now, if you can get it, I would recommend getting this card. So when I compare this card to the EVGA FTW3 Ultra, I did find that the core clocks on this actually were a little bit higher and as a result, a bit more performance um, than that card. So if you really want probably the fastest that you can get right now outside of the Kingpin cards, this is the card for you. Question is, is whether you can get your hands on one. So. I was fortunate enough to actually wait in line for this card, but uh, overall, very impressed by the card. I think it is certainly worth it, and uh, I hope that you guys can uh, get one out there. That wraps up the video on the ROG 3090 Strix. I hope you liked it, guys. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section down below. Of course, if you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel, and until next time, bye for now.